Hey everyone, my name is Dawn and welcome to What's the Stitch, a weekly web program where I answer all of your burning questions about sewing, costuming, and cosplay. Today I want to talk about patterns. More specifically, what are those weird shapes that they're covered in? What do they do? What is that arrow for? And why is everything covered in triangles? If you're not, I am here to answer all of your questions. First and most importantly, why are there all those random triangles covering my pattern? Those are your notches. They mark where you're supposed to match these pieces to other pieces when you're sewing. You can mark these with pins, tailor chalk, or use pieces of thread. I personally like to use chalk or crayon simply because if I use pins, they tend to fall out and stab me. Or if I use loose stitches, they also tend to fall out and it completely defeats the purpose of me putting them in there to begin with. One thing that you're going to see most commonly, aside from all of our little triangle friends, is a double-ended arrow that is going to span most of the length of your pattern pieces. This is your grain line. Each of the sides of those arrows should be equally distant from the edge of your fabric. Most of the time this ends up being straight up and down, but if your fabric is cut on the bias, this is going to end up at a diagonal. Another version of this that you're going to see is a double-ended arrow with the ends pointed towards the side of the fabric. This means that this piece is meant to be cut on the fold. So align those two arrow pieces up to the folded edge of your fabric and pin around it accordingly. That way when you open it up, you're going to have a perfectly symmetrical piece to sew with. Um, another thing that you're often going to see is twin solid lines somewhere in the length of your pattern. If you're going to make any adjustments to your pattern, if you're going to lengthen or shorten it, this is the spot where you're going to do that. Many bodice, pant, and skirt pieces are often going to have a large triangular marking with a dotted line down the center. Those are your darts, they're going to help fit the clothing closer to your body. When you're sewing darts, it helps to mark the solid lines with chalk and then fold your garments right sides together, pinning the fabric so the dotted line is down the center. Then what you're going to do is you're going to sew along your matched outer triangle lines. Experience note here, clothing that has a princess seam, that is a seam that goes all the way from the top to the bottom of the garment, or one that goes from the armhole down to the bottom, is not going to have a dart because those darts have already been worked into the shape of the pattern. At the bottom of your sleeves or down the center front of your garment, you may also see weird elongated H symbols that have an X through them. These mark the size and placement of your buttonholes. The X marks where the button should be sewn on the side, and the H represents the placement and the size of how big your buttonhole is going to be. You're also going to often see a pair of filled-in darts with a double-ended arrow between them. These are often going to be shown at the top of your sleeve or the waistband of a skirt or a pair of pants. These are your gathering points. What you do with these is you run a pair of parallel lines of loose stitches between these two points, leaving long trailing ends on either side. Not the two ends, and then pull those threads snug until your sleeve or skirt fits the armhole or waistband. Similar to this, you may see an arrow between a straight line and a dotted line. These mark where you're going to be doing pleats. We're going to be talking about how to do different kinds of pleats in a later video. This one, however, is your most basic kind of pleat. I also like to mark these with a crayon or wax chalk using two different colors so I know what line needs to be folded and where it is going to be folded to. So what you do is you fold your fabric along the solid line, wrong sides together, then bring that folded edge over to where the dotted line is marked following the direction of the arrow. Pin in place with two pins to keep it steady. Pro tip when you're doing a pleated piece, do not sew the pleats in place unless you're sure that that pleated piece fits the waist or sleeve measurement that you're going to be using. You don't want to have to rip out all of your stitching and repin everything if it doesn't fit right. Alright everyone, that is our introduction to reading patterns. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and give that bell a ring if you want to be notified when I post more videos. If you have any suggestions or questions for future videos, please leave me a comment below and I'll be sure to address them in an upcoming segment. Thank you so much. I will see you next week in another video. Bye!